so as a seeker, what I wanted, what I wanted to know was what was really going on. Not just what's going on, what's really going on. Something more significant. <laughs> what's absolutely going on. <laughs> and of course, there isn't anything else going on other than what seems to be going on. That's, that's the whole message. It's no news. So the news is <laughs> no news. This is not news. This is not something additional. Just what's happening as it's happening, no more, no less. There is really nothing more than what's happening. And what's happening is nothing more than what's happening. It's, it's outrageously simple. It's more than simple. Simple doesn't really convey the simplicity of life as it is. This is not suggesting another way, something else, something different. Something special. But of course, if this is all there is, if all there is is what there is, then of course it's special beyond special. But it is the end of dreams of other than, hopes of other than more than, less than. And yet, paradoxically, of course, all of those thoughts, all of those imaginings, they're all included if they're what's happening. There's no exclusion, none. And so the word unconditional is probably the best word we have to describe the nature, you could say, the nature of nature, the nature of life, the nature of how things are. Things are as they are, unconditionally. That's all. It's not what you've dreamt of. Because whatever you've dreamt of is something else. This is all. All and nothing.
I'm not very prepared today. My coffee's cold already. It's not great. So if you'd like to ask a question or you'd like to share anything, then just put your hand up or just unmute yourself and ask. I'm a bit croaky, so I'm just going to get a glass of water. Cheers. Hi, Tim. Caleb. Can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Hello. Hello. Um, it's a bit dark where I am. Yeah, why are you, why are you sitting in the dark? Oh, I know, saving electricity. Saving electricity. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, I've, I've been listening to this message like a couple of years now, and it it feels true somehow there's something that resonates really deeply with it and it it just seems obvious yeah but there's still this ex me experience here that mm -hmm. somehow knows that or and i'm i'm still waiting for that to drop somehow to i want yeah. that i want it to stop I'm, yeah I'm, I'm sick of it yeah Oh yeah, <laughs> that's very familiar. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I I kind of know yeah. that there's nothing I can do. So well, nothing can. Well, it's what. Yeah, I it's mean, I don't want to sound too much like Tony yeah. Parsons, but it's worse than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I and I shouldn't laugh because fucking hell, it's it's yeah, it's torturous. Now. But it's worse than there's nothing you can do. Of course, there's yeah, no, yeah. there's no way no. to do anything. Yeah, yeah. Which isn't worse, but it may sound worse to me because they go because me won't have it. You know, really, because all we're talking about, Caleb, really is that me won't have it. That you know me is the conviction that i am that's all yeah. and and if that conviction doesn't appear then there's you won't even notice yeah there's there's nothing to notice so you will not notice the absence of yourself no that's what you're waiting for you're waiting for something that's of course doesn't really happen yeah. 
so that I mean it's great paradox I, I'm I'm always asked about so you know when did it happen how did it happen describe what happened when it happened describe the difference before and after it happened um describe how it's better since it's happened and it's all nonsense um and, and that in a way that's that's tragic there's there's a tr it's kind of a tragic comedy yeah that there isn't i mean you say you know you you know that there is, you still have a sense of self people say it to me all the time well it's okay for you because you know that you don't have a sense of self i don't know i don't have a sense of self any more than i know that well with what seems to not appear is that conviction that I have a sense of self. That's really all. But in the absence of that, there isn't anything in its place. So, I mean, there is no greater comedy than what you're waiting for. You won't know if it happens. Yeah. It's a cruel joke, isn't it? Yeah. And because, and there is a reason for that, it's because nothing happens. It's a loss of something that isn't. So it's not that self is lost. There is no self. Yeah. But the very sense of that weight, the very, the, that very energy, if you want, uh, that sense of waiting, that is me. It's not that I'm waiting. The waiting is what I am. Uh, I am the sense of I'm not there yet. I'm, there's still... There's still yeah. something, there's still something out, there's something missing, there's something else. Well, there isn't something else. There isn't anything else. No, but I kind of get that. I, I, I'm well aware that you get it. <laughs> everyone, who, everyone who's come to these meetings re or resonates with this gets that. Yeah. But, and again, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a cruel joke. This has nothing to do with getting it. No, I know, yeah. Nothing whatsoever. It's, this has nothing to do with knowing or understanding or getting anything. There's nothing to get. Yeah. You could say, because everything is got, this is got. Yeah. It's, <laughs> so you can't get got, can you? Gets already got. You can't yeah. get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that that sense of waiting. I mean, you. <laughs> and it is cruel because you're waiting, and when when it does happen, you won't know because you won't be there to witness it. No. There'll be no witnessing. There is no witnessing now, but if there's a sense of witnessing, that's what's happening. Yeah. There's no way around that. No. So an imaginary witness can't... <laughs> can't unwitness. Unwitness yeah. is witnessing. Yeah. No. There's... Um... No, that's why there can be no prescription in any sense with this at all. Yeah. That's what makes it, but that's why I could speak about love, because of course, if there was, then if there was prescription, then it wouldn't be unconditional, would it? It'd be conditional yeah. on you achieving yeah. something. Yeah. Basically getting rid of yourself that you're sick of. Yeah. But, but don't, I don't want you to think, I'm, I'm sure, because I've spoken to you enough, that you know that I'm very, I haven't forgotten what it's like to be sick of myself. Right? Yeah. The memory of that is still quite vivid. As a story. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's all it is, isn't it? It's just a story. Well, of course, I am a story. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. But interestingly, of course, we're not talking about the 
there's, there's been a problem with stories. Stories are just <clears> what they are. But me won't, me doesn't say that I am just a story, of course. The sense of me is, to me, is very real. More yeah. real than anything else. It's like everything is filtered <clears throat> through the reality that I am real. And by real, what I mean is I know, I know myself. I know who I am. Yeah. I know my meanness. I know my amness. It's mine. Yeah. And, that, and there, there lies most of what we call suffering, psychological suffering. Yeah. Is that, that sense of ownership, that, that sense that this being is separate from all, all other beings. Yeah. Yeah, because you can, I can almost be fulfill this I am without story, without kind of. Yeah. And it's still there, this sense of. I will say, I, I'll, I'll contradict myself, which I'm really good at. And I said, it's just story. It's not just story. Yeah. It's, a, it's a bodily felt sense yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah, it's a feeling as well as a story. Hard to separate the two, actually. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks for nothing. Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> thanks for nothing, yeah. <laughs> John has the hand up. Hi, John. Hi, Tim. Uh, yeah, just following what Caleb was saying, I, 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 I agree. Just saying that uh, me is as as a story. I suppose me me wants to be the storyteller. Mm -hmm. He wants to be the narrator, the one who's sort of putting the stories together. Yeah. And and so the fact that it's actually in the narrative rather than the creator of the narrative that's that's the, that's the thing that ruins the whole setup for me really because it, it proves it's just one more bit of a sort of ongoing story making process but it's not actually the author of it. no there is no author no yeah yeah well there's no narrator and there's and there's no actor i mean you could say that all of those are elements of self aren't there the narrator the yeah. the star you know the main protagonist yeah in, in the story, you know, the star of the show, and um, and also the author. Hmm. And, and, and I even think, I think different different uh, it, it appears differently to different selves. So some selves don't see themselves as a narrator. Uh, you know, I think some selves tell tell the story in a different way. So some are narrators, some are just the the actor, the main, the you know the main actor in the story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but whether you're the actor, that, whether you're the author, the actor, or the narrator, it's just just it's all storytelling. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to ask you um, something else as well. Um, sorry, but. Um, to quote Tony Parsons, he, he often describes these meetings, yeah, he often describes these meetings, uh, he says, you know, really what it is under, it's a sort of energy exchange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, I, and I wondered what that might mean for you, that expression. Uh, that doesn't mean anything to me at all. <laughs> because it sounds it sounds um and I, I always had a problem with that because tony spoke about energy a lot and i I always it would just go i don't know what he means what does he mean and i guess what he means by it what the word that i would prefer to use is resonance which he used that word as well but i don't even i don't know see energy sounds like an explanation for the word resonance so so I, it sounds like an attempt to understand what this mystery yeah. of resonance might yeah. be. 
So an explanation could be as energetic. Yeah. And I, I don't have a problem with it at all because uh, all the words seem completely empty to me. So I, there, it doesn't matter what you say, yeah. but energy sounds like an attempted explanation and I don't have any sense of that. I can't explain anything at all about how this works, how life works, how anything works. Yeah. And um, so that's why I don't speak about energy because it sounds like um, I, I know what I'm talking about. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I haven't got any idea what I'm talking about. But then why there's this sense of love is because every time I speak to a human being or whether I'm with, when I'm with other human beings, it's very, very obvious that they have no idea what they're speaking about either. And that is love. That really, it's very palpable, that. But whilst you're still in the story of there are some special human beings with special knowledge, special understanding, mm -hmm. then, I mean, that, there's no love in that, yeah. you know, this, this, because it's, in, uh, it's innately unequal. There's an inequality in that, that, that doesn't really exist. I mean, human beings are absolutely equal. Yes. I mean, I could still respect specific knowledge. I mean, I always use the car mechanic analogy because it's one that, but I, or I could do the heating engineer who I've rung today to come around to fix my heating. Now, I'll have great respect and fawn all over the heating engineer for his expertise that I don't have in mending my heating. But in terms of existential knowledge and understanding, fuck off. Mm. You know, I don't, I have no respect for anyone who says they know what's, what's happening, how life works. I do still have it at a scientific level, don't get me wrong, but that's, a, that's not an existential level, that's just on a mechanical uh, scientific level, you could say, you know. Uh, yeah. And I can still have respect for that, but not, not philosophically, not existentially. Uh, thanks, Tim. Because I, 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 for me, when he uses that word, um, I can I can see how, not for me, but there, there's a certain sort of um, seeker can pick up that word and and start to really get off on it um, oh, yeah, as a, yeah. as as a whole sort of causal thing. Yeah, and 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 the idea that you know that you can you know receive energy and, yeah. and this that and the other. And, and 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 yeah, and that was always a bit of a stumbling block for me because I thought, like you, I, I realized that it is actually it's always simpler than any formulation anyone makes. It's always simpler than that. That's and it's how, actually so fucking simple you can't even put a word on it. That's it. That's it. Now I don't use the word mystery, but I could mm. do, but I don't use the word mystery because it sounds far too mysterious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, so yeah. I can use the word mystery as in, oh, no, you're not <laughs> going to know the answer. There aren't any answers. Forget about yeah. it. Because mystery, yeah. you could say, OK, yeah. it's a mystery. But of course, what selves hear the word mystery and go, and they get, yeah. well, yeah. there's nothing I like more than a mystery, because what yeah. am I going to do? I'm going to fucking solve that mystery. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there have been there have been clever human beings before my arrival on earth but now i'm you know now i'm so i've studied a lot i'm going to solve this riddle yeah well <laughs> so there are plenty of non-dual mystery speakers who 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 will tell you okay it is a mystery but you can know this and this and this and this aspect of the mystery, but it's still a mystery. Well, I'm just saying, forget all that. There's no knowing. All knowing is empty. So there is, there is knowledge, there is understanding, but it's all empty. And 
I know that that's not helpful. This message isn't helpful in trying to understand, in trying to get to the bottom. I'm suggesting there isn't a bottom to get to. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. if this is if this is bottomless. <laughs> And of course, emptiness doesn't have a bottom. That's why the ocean is a limited analogy. You know, you've heard the ocean analogy for what we speak of. But of course, it's very limited because, of course, you can get to the bottom of the ocean. And then the ocean is limited, it's, it's bounded in depth. Well, this doesn't have depth. That's why I, I could never, as a seeker, I don't know how or why, but there was an intuitive sense of anything that talked about depth, just as anything that spoke about higher. So there were, there's basically two ways you can go as a seeker, can't you? You can go up or down. So the poor material, normal human beings who are on a linear path, they're going along in a straight line. But of course, the spiritual, you can either ascend or you can descend. You can go deeper and deeper. So generally, that's going inside to the depths or, or you can ascend to the heights. Just stories of... But if can I, can I, yeah, go on. I, I wanted to share a fun fact with you. Okay. Uh, you probably know. Um, in, in medieval English, the word mystery was yeah. the, the secrets of a trade. So when you were initiated into the mysteries, it meant uh, you were initiated into a, um, a guild and they told you, you know, how to make silver, how to make gold, how to harness stuff and so on. Right. So probably your heating engineer actually has been initiated into the mysteries. Well, I hope of, so. Of heating engineering. I certainly hope he has. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Tim. That's, that's oh, really, thank that's a great. Um, 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 in the chat, Ian says, I think you were talking earlier about how the self doesn't fall away, nothing, nothing actually happens. He yeah. says, so how to stop waiting for something that doesn't happen? Yeah, that's a mystery, Ian. <laughs> well, well, there isn't anyone waiting, but there is waiting if that's what's happening, yeah. if there's a sense of waiting. How to stop waiting. Yeah, another one that I could, mm, I could be a very wealthy man on that. If I could write, prescribe how human beings could stop waiting. But again, I'm not sure um, if, if you could do it, if I could <laughs> stop selves from waiting, then they wouldn't want it. I think maybe you haven't really heard this, that if there's no waiting, there is no you. That is the end. This is the end. The beginning and the end. Now, what self doesn't want is the end. Self doesn't want this to be the end. There is no hope if this is the end. There is no future. There is nothing to come. There's no next. And of course, if there is no next, that is the end of wait.
And if there is no waiting, that is the end of what you've called yourself. And of course, in the end of that, there is no end. The end of something that never is, never was, never will be. And that is not what you want. Now, as Caleb said earlier, I'm very aware that a lot of you who come to my meetings and other people and go to other meetings, you're waiting for the absence of yourself. There is no absence of yourself. There is no self to be absent. Now, it's hard, almost impossible for self to hear that. And by hear it, I mean hear it in a, in a felt bodily sense way. There is already no self to lose. That is the end of waiting. Natalie has a hand up. Hi, Natalie. <coughs> Hi. Hi. Um, I have so much to say about nothing and everything. <laughs> it's like, how do I pick? Uh, um, I don't know. Um, I was thinking about what you were saying about waiting. And I remember a period of time where I was waiting for something. I understood like conceptually everything about no self. I understood the concepts. And I was feeling like I was waiting for something to happen. Yeah. But now I don't wait. And it's like nothing happened at all. I'm and I'm but I'm not waiting anymore like it's so you know weird it's it's like mm, I don't know things almost seem like undone um undone yeah 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 it's just like um I don't know uh lately just it's just been a few weeks I was I had had an argument. I have a 17 year old daughter and she had just flipped out, just was literally ranting and raving and all of this. And um, I went, I went and laid down. I was ready to go to bed and out of nowhere, just like all these thoughts came in, even a thought of her in a coffin, like she had said she was going to kill herself or something. And like, all these just random thoughts and for the first time i really was like what the hell where is that coming from like i just could see these thoughts and i was like well i'm not thinking this like and it seemed like the more i looked at th these thoughts it was just kind of a weird thing because i know there's no one to look at them but you know how you just kind of notice something and it just seemed like they would go faster and faster the thoughts and like flashes of things and i was just like oh. and then Finally, it's like it just ended because I, I maybe I didn't give it attention. I don't know what it was, yeah. but, um, you know, and then the thinking about when someone says something to me, I think I used to know, I think I thought I knew what they were talking about, you know? Mm -hmm. And now I don't really know what people are talking about necessarily. Like someone will say something and they'll, they'll expect me to know what they mean. And in a way, I kind of think I know what they mean, but then it's like, I really don't, I don't know. It's just been little weird things like this mm -hmm. going on, you know? Yeah. So, but no more waiting, no more wondering because I just like, there's really nothing to know there's no authority in anything that could know something that could tell me anything i mean sure the mechanic you know whatever but i don't know like i do a lot of art pieces and so i 
I do, I have always realized like my hands will be moving materials, things. And then next thing you know, something's made. And yeah. I don't put any ownership on that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the thoughts, I feel like hmm, without the person, without the personal story, these thoughts would still come in, but they would just quickly dissipate possibly. But then there is a, there's a connection to the human being and the story, like the thoughts that come in, right? These yeah. random thoughts just mm -hmm. aren't just out of the blue, random, random. Well, sometimes they actually are pretty, pretty thing. Random things happen, you know, a lot. It's all, but, it's all, ran, it's all random until yeah. it's put together as a story. Right. So like if I smashed my toe, I would be, I don't know where this thought even came. I don't know where these thoughts come from, but if I smashed my toe and I thought, oh, that hurts, then maybe if someone were asking me, well, what happened? And I would say some big, oh, you should have seen it. And I would love to just tell this big gigantic story of how I've hurt, broken my toe or whatever, um, which is fine. That's fine too. I'm not, I don't do that a lot, but maybe I will, who knows if I will. But anyway, basically attaching that like meaning, feeling like this is my toe, this has happened to me. It's just like, it seems funny now. It seems kind of funny, like yeah. in a weird way, you know, I don't know. But I did get your book. I emailed you. I was thinking the poetry book was the one I was getting but there are poems in the book yeah there are so that's some. nice I like that oh well as you brought it up naturally I might as well do the plug thank yeah. you yeah you're welcome like, that segue that, yeah that was that was like a feed line mm -hmm. so um for Christmas um <laughs> not sure I think the title will be empty poems of this love hopefully out shortly I haven't got a date, but soon, next few weeks, hopefully. Just poems. And um, I'm calling them poems because even though I've really, they're just, rather than writing full lines, I just put two words on a line and then I call it a poem. I mean, it's the saddest thing really is, for a poet to do. Um, <laughs> and most of them, really all of them virtually, are just um, my posts from Facebook from the last, over about a period of a year, from a year ago. Wonderful, obviously. Well, I'll, I'll be keeping my eye out for it. Oh, for sure. you. Yeah, I have written a few poems too. I don't know why. It just spontaneously happened and I took notes on my phone. I just was pressed the microphone button and started talking. So yeah, nice. Just, yeah. Yeah. I like that. Thanks, Natalie. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> John has his hand up. Yeah, can I can I just say, Tim? I mean, I love the way you're. I, I totally get why you're so unpretentious about what those poems may be or not, or whether they are poems or not. Yeah, they clearly are, because when anybody puts two words on one line and leaves a lot of blank space, they are asking you to savor those words with more attention than when they're just writing prose lines. I mean, so that it, there's definitely a poet, poetic intention there. No question about it. And I think they're great. But I have to say, I mean, in, in view of your, your self-disparaging. Um, I, I, I think the reason I'm so disparaging is because I, th they come without intent, really. They, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Because I just think a poet, there's no lay there's no labor in it that's why i just they, they yeah, appear you're, so yeah, you're to sweat yeah there's no sweat involved so 
And I just think, well, poets suffer for their art, surely. You know, that's, yeah, how, it yeah. should, that's how it should be. You know, just like any great artist, there must be some suffering involved. Yeah, and you haven't paid your dues. Well, no, I don't well, you know, like to say that, yeah. I, I, I would, but I would like you to know that um, I actually met somebody uh, uh, when I went to Crete this summer to Andreas's week-long yeah. thing. I met somebody there and we were saying our favorite speakers and so on. I said, oh, I love Tim. And she said, oh, I don't like Tim. I said, why not poetry? So pretentious. So <laughs> <laughs> there you are, totally you are. unpretending. There you yeah. are, totally unpretending. And yet there's somebody who's actually, who's actually seen that. through it all. Yeah. <laughs> seen through it all and worked Yeah, there, I mean, fact. I can pull the wall over your eyes, but not hers, obviously. Clearly, clearly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Yeah, no. Yeah. Thanks, so John. I well, you know, she's obviously a philistine and you're a, and somebody who does know art when they see it. An Israelite. <laughs> yes. Uh, Kelly says in the chat, I, th I think you've suffered for your poetry. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. She's saying she suffered for it. <laughs> 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 no, you could say, you could say that. She says no, she says she thinks you've suffered. No. Yeah. Well, if you tell the story, Mm -hmm. Tim's story, then there's plenty of suffering in that. But not but not in the not in the words that are in the book that's coming out. Will has his hand up. Hi, Will. Hi, Tim. Hi. Talking about um, suffering, you've sometimes talked about, well, in the past, about your experiences with depression. Yeah. Is that something that can't happen anymore there? Or I know it's a bit of a personal question, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, it is a personal question. Yeah, but I don't mind. I don't know that it can't happen. No, because anything yeah. can happen. No, it's, it's, this is nothing to do with things, something can't happen anymore. No. Yeah. No, no, there's no sense of that whatsoever. I see. If you ask me, do I get depressed now? No. Yeah. But <laughs> could, it, <laughs> could it happen? Yes, of course. And yeah, of course, I could equally say no to that because there's, yeah. there's nothing that's going to happen. But in the story of what might happen, yeah, anything might happen. Thank you. Yeah, it's a good answer. Whenever, I, whenever I think of asking a question, it just quite often just falls into well, the, the, the thing. Is about, <laughs> yeah, but I don't. Uh, there is there is no sense that there couldn't be depression. No, because uh, it's if you think of it as um, an extreme. Well, it depends what you mean by depression, of course. Yeah. As well. I mean, we have this word as though everyone knows what we're speaking about. Well, you speak to three different people who have been diagnosed as depressed and their GP has uh, given them antidepressants. And you ask those three people, tell me your story of what depression is to you. It will not be the same. I no, guess. exactly. Yeah. It's quite we have, we have, that's the problem. We have these blanket terms yeah. for, very, for very unique human experiences. And, uh, and there's quite a lot of harm just in that. Yeah, uh, and of course, self yeah. loves a diagnosis. I mean, yeah, I mean, we conspire together to have these diagnoses of what it is to be human, and part of it is this diagnosis of depression. Yes, and uh, the, and it it makes all the other selves happy. You know, there's some comfort for those who are not suffering from depression to know. Oh, now we know what's wrong with him. He's suffering from depression. And it gives this false security of knowledge that now we know what's wrong with him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and thank God. And thank God he's getting some treatment. 
you know? Yeah. And uh, for some people, it's, it can be huge anxiety. It can be, for other people, it can be complete flatness. Absolutely. There's no way of actually knowing. Yeah, like you said, well, I guess with any labels, really, you don't really know yeah. what, what they mean. No, because a lot of a lot of what's diagnosed as depression is actually yeah acute anxiety, right? Really, yes, yeah. debilitating anxiety. Well, I mean, that's not that's some other not, well, some other people. It's complete flatness and just absolutely sleep. It's just, just there could be no anxiety, you know. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. And often it's a mixture of the two, and it's a unique blend of this. I mean, you could say. I, mean, I looked at depression a lot in trying to understand my, my own predicament, which was feeling depressed. And uh, it was always this mixture of anxiety and very low mood, you know, extreme, what you just call blues, you know, but in a very extreme way. Yeah. Like very low mood, um, dreadful low self-esteem, all of that. Um. But for each each human being, you know, this blanket label of depression, I'm I'm not sure it's helpful at all. Yeah, I can kind of see where my. That's why I had trouble asking that question because I know that for me, I'm someone who has suffered from depression and anxiety, and it comes out of. I can see the root of the question already. It's like, well, maybe this will stop that. You know, or maybe that won't happen anymore after. Yeah. That. Yeah. That's why it's hard to even ask that question because I know where it's coming from, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I will say, so if you really want, I mean, this is, I mean, this is me being very personal here, that I can still have very low mood, but it's got a very different flavor than it was when it was my low mood. Now, yeah. it might sound trite and it might sound like, well, uh, you know, he's splitting hairs, but it yeah. is. When, when I am low, as opposed to there's just this feeling of, uh, you could say apathy, a, a real lack of motivation. Well, self gets very afraid of that because of course I need to get on with my life. There's things to the need to be, I need to work. I need to work on my relationships. I need to be really on top of my game and anything that is affecting my game, then I get afraid, I get fear. And it's a, it's a loop that self gets into. Yes. And, but I will say, uh, low moods appear just like they did. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not high all the time. <laughs> and that's why I, ne I never speak about this as happiness at all. Yeah. This has nothing, I can't emphasize this enough, but enough. This dreadful myth of happiness is our natural state that pisses me right off. Mm. There is n happiness is no more the natural state of a human being than sadness is. And I really, <laughs> I really resent anyone who speaks about non duality as any sort of permanent state. I mean, most don't go for bliss anymore. It just sounds a bit too. Oh, it's joy, joy, uncaused joy. Is oh, yeah, but yeah, but constant. Of course, joy is uncaused, but joy, like everything else, just fucking passes. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, there might be more joy, more moments of joy, because you're not totally engulfed in your own misery and your own yeah. anxiety and your own fears for yourself. Joy is. You kind of out the way. It's there it? to be enjoyed. It can just yeah. it can just naturally appear, but joy doesn't appear any more than it ever did. No, I think that's bullshit. Mm. Happiness doesn't. I'm not talking about happiness at all. Mm. I'm I'm talking about everything appearing as it appears, and you know that everything appears disappears, and seemingly some seem to stay a while but really it's just an appearing and i know you've often spoken about sadness being just as much love as oh, without and joy. i mean yeah. yeah not being afraid of sadness I, I was always afraid of sadness i was always running from sadness the innate inevitable sadness of being human it's inescapable without me because I was the running from it. I was the hiding from 
the fact that everything is always being lost. Mm. I think the very sense of self is, is a lot of it is 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 that is that hiding or running from the obvious fact. And I really mean this. It's so obvious that there is nothing to hold on to. You have nothing. No one has. But the thing is, that's love. The love is that there's no one who has anything. I mean, not having something is only a problem because you're so envious of all those who have. Yeah. Well, you have nothing either. Apart from what we all have and that we can't speak of, you can use whatever your wor word you want for that, mm. for this, that we all have, that is universal. You can use whatever word. I, I like the word love. But you, you know, being, love, life, energy, whatever, I know, whatever floats your boat. One thing, one thing I would really emphasize is don't get hung up on the word like the problem is, of course, what self does, it, it takes a word and makes that the truth. And then, of course, all the other words are untruth. Then. Well, there's no words that are the truth. This is a truth that can't be spoken. Right. Thank you, Tim. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Will. Mm, that's nice. Um, Natalie has a hand up. Hi. I, I just thought of something when you guys were talking. Um, but then my daughter started talking to me and it made me oof, um, forget what I was going to. Oh, um, it's about, I, I think I, I think there was a point where I thought everything was going to be like, like la la land, I would be in the clouds. Oh, everything's so wonderful. Mm. But um, what, I've not <laughs> what I've noticed is there's this, I don't, I, I can't describe it at all, but it's like something, it's a feeling or it's a, some sort of quality that's in everything it's almost like wraps i don't know it sounds really like um hippie-ish or something i don't know how to describe it though but like so i don't know i, I it's like i almost don't hold back emotions like whereas you know like i don't know this is a really stupid thing but yesterday i was like driving and i was like i started crying which i don't even cry I think I've always, I always hold back tears. I think like ever since I was a kid, I always have held back tears. Like, but I was just, I don't even know. I just started crying and then I didn't even care. I was in a car, people were around me. I just did, but it wasn't like I was like forcing this or, you know, I don't know, girls sometimes look in the mirror and cry when they're little. It wasn't like that. It was just like bawling my eyes out. And then when it stopped, it was just like, boom and I yeah. felt like wow okay but I still felt that quality that feeling of I don't want to call it love because that's got so many connotations with it but it was this kind of a quality where held sounds wrong I don't I don't know what it was but it was this feeling of this is life like this is it this is life it wasn't like oh poor me I'm driving in a freezing cold car and I'm crying no it was just like I felt like not happy about it being life and I'm crying, but just like an okayness or something, you know, just like, not that I need to be okay with anything. It just felt just like, yeah, you know, oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Okay. <laughs> I just thought I'd share that because you, well, you an brought okay that up. An okayness with crying. I've, I've spoken to so many people who have said that, that yeah. um, the t tears will naturally come. You, what self has done <laughs> in the story is held back the tears. And, uh, there's no need, to, you know, that's if, if there's not that, that fear of sadness, then tears are really very natural. Yeah. Right. And, in the story and, oh, and, and crying 
crying has an okayness that is really beautiful. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It really did feel beautiful, even though it was weird, you know, crying in a car, but well, it the wasn't thing, weird. Yeah, it, well, it really it, wasn't weird. Well, you've, you know, you've had the habit of not crying. Yeah. We, yeah. We, were all taught, we were all taught as children not to cry because right. it, upset, it upset our parents. None of, none of the adults wanted you to cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. How many times did you hear that? Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. Whoa. Yeah. Cry. I've even said it to my own kids when, when I, I was younger. Yeah, and of course I said it to my kids. I might even say it now because it's so habitual. It's it is. such a thing. Yeah. It's really, it's so heavily conditioned, this don't cry. Yeah. Yeah. Because... If, if your children cry or you see, yeah, if you see children cry or other adults cry, then you're likely to cry or certainly have the sense of it because it's, yeah. just, it's just the natural human reaction of empathy. It's completely natural and yet we're afraid of it. There's nothing to fear in, in sadness. It's actually... It's beautiful. I mean, not in a beautiful way it's just beautiful as in it's just so just not even real is even the right <laughs> word but it's just you know everything's okay it's an okayness it's just like a relaxed like yeah. i don't know yeah oh thanks natalie thanks thank you does anita want to ask me something? yeah anita yeah hi tim hi anita um, yeah, I don't have a problem with crying, but, um, I really thought that joy is under, uh, a lot of feelings. There is a kind of a joy. Yeah. There's, there's, you could say there's joy in sadness. Mm -hmm. I would say love, but, you know. Joy, yeah. joy and sadness are just two sides of love, you could say. Two aspects. And by love, I just really... Yeah, but I, I really mean there is joy under a feeling of, of sadness or under a feeling of angriness or this, this joy of... I can't say it, but there's a kind of a joy, this joy. I, I really thought this is... It's, yeah, that it's there. Yeah. Yeah, I just use the word love rather than joy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's so much love in laughter, but there's, there's, there's just as much, if not more intense, love in sorrow in tears. Mm -hmm. And one of the, I would say one of the great liberations that makes this worth speaking about is that there's no fear of sadness anymore. I was always afraid of being sad. Uh -huh. I there's nothing to be there's nothing to be afraid of sadness doesn't kill you if you cry the tears will stop i always told myself the story that if i cried if i really cried if i really felt the sorrow that i felt for myself or just naturally felt sorrow then the tears would never stop i would drown in them Yeah, I, I had some moments that I had a feeling that I kind of, that I become the sadness. Mm -hmm. And then it, it was really sometimes difficult to get out of that. Yeah. Yeah, I know that feeling. But of 
of course, we don't actually ever get out of anything. Feelings, feelings just appear and then seemingly last for some time or not. And then, and then they're gone. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm going, to, I'm going to meal you. Thanks, Anita. Thanks. <coughs> Uh, I've got time for one more quick question. Yeah, who's got uh, In chat, Ar Arnie or Arn, says, has your parenting changed with the falling away of the person? I'm probably not the best judge of that, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, if I was guessing, yeah, I'm... As a, as a per parenting style, I would say I'm far more laissez-faire. Much less authoritarian. Far more laissez-faire. <laughs> Much more of a pushover. Um, Alfie did say to me, he did say to his friend at school, he wouldn't dare tell his mum. He went, I only have to ask my dad for something, he just gets me it. There you go, there's my parenting style. You could say it's the shit parenting style because the it's everything that I was taught is the worst kind of parent. You're spoiled, spoiling those kids. But I will say, of course, there is a difference between only parenting some of the time rather than all of the time. I think if I was all the time, then I'd soon be a grumpy old bastard. So, yeah, I'd completely agree with you with that. Yeah, <laughs> but um, is it different? Yeah, because I think really, if you think about how you respond to others, particularly in a position of authority, it's in relation to how you you deal with yourself. So, because I'm much much seemingly easier with this human being i'm much easier with the other ones as well so i don't give my myself anywhere near the shit that i used to give myself about how i should be how i should behave how you know <laughs> because there is an absence of guilt here then I've no interest in guilt tripping my sons. And you think what the amount of parenting that is called good parenting, that is basically making your kid feel guilty. Because if he has, if he has a, you know, a very powerful super ego, if you get his conscience working so that he um, monitors his own behavior because you've instilled a load of guilt in him, it makes your life easier as a parent. <laughs> so I don't do that. In fact, I think it's abhorrent, all of that, which we call normal parenting, which is basically making a child feel guilty. And so they monitor their own behaviour. And then they've got that internal parent who's always chastising them. Wonderful. That's my psychology lesson for today. <laughs> I do hate all that shit, though. Isn't it dreadful? What we call good parenting, making our kids feel... You know, making sure their superego is working well. Keeping them on the straight and narrow. Well, get off the straight and narrow. What sort of shit path is that? <laughs> there are no paths. Get off that straight and narrow one. Wander off. Wander off the path into the woods. See the bears and the wolves. You'll probably get eaten, but, you know, it'd be good for 10 minutes. Stop trying to get safely to the grave. There's no fucking point. <laughs> it's 
Sorry, it's a bit extreme. Uh, but true. <laughs> yeah, wander off that path, whatever path, whatever path you have told yourself the story that you're on. Fuck the path. It's bullshit. There's no path to here and there's no path leading away. There we are. Where's the fucking path? On that high note, I shall bid you good evening and um, hope to see you next Thursday. I will plug, I'm in Hampstead for a live meeting. If you could manage to get to London the week before Christmas. So it is the 17th of December. I'm in Hampstead on the 17th of December. Non-duality and Christmas drinks. Sounds good. Woo Mince pies will be available. Maybe chocolate log. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, a bit of a Christmas get together. If any of you could make it, it would be brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there's a nice, um, I listened to a chat with you and Alihio, a little interview. There's a nice interview on YouTube with, that Alihio uh, did if anyone's interested. Yeah, I did enjoy that. It's quite yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, it was. Where do the, where do people find that? I think if they probably type in, uh, I don't know, Tim Cliss. Elijo. I, I can. Uh, I can put a link here if you guys want. Put it. Put it in the chat. Okay. Here. Do what? Do what? Oh, the King baby. I guess here. Copy. Sorry. Now, thank you, Darren. Thank you for. It's all right. I, that too. I enjoyed it. Oh, there you go. Darren enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It's a little bit different because yeah. it wasn't just, you know, the usual shit I get from Elysio. I did get some of that. But there was, uh, it was always <laughs> from his beautiful wife, um, Melissa. It was fun. And it was fun, yeah. It's fun. Because Melissa is... Um, to say she's cynical is probably an understatement. She is riddled with cynicism, calling me, you know, and saying, what sort of cult are you running here? Yeah, I realized she so, thinks I'm in a cult. Yeah, she called me a cult. And I said, are you misspelling that? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist that joke. Um, oh, my God um yeah but that yeah it was fun and it's a little bit different from most non-dual stuff it's a bit lighter i think yeah yeah it was nice well thanks for coming everybody and yeah hope to see you next week if you're not on the mailing list then you'd like to be then just email me at um via the website timplistthis.com Thanks, Darren. Thank Thanks, you, Tim. Tim and Darren, and thank you, everybody. No, oh, thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Darren. 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 Thank you, Darren.